Hey everybody, we're here today with Angela Kalla, who is our first leading lady for the Magical Unicorn Project interview series. And Angela is our leading lady because she is somebody who has soared to great heights in her career, but always when you're soaring to great heights and climbing that ladder, there's lots of obstacles you're facing along the way. So we're gonna to talk to Angela and have a candid conversation to hear all about her journey. So Angela, think back 10 years ago, did you envision this is where you would be today? You know what, I have to say, I absolutely envisioned. I mean, I didn't have every single element completely dialed in, but I certainly knew that I was continuing on a path. I knew that there was no obstacle that I wouldn't be able to overcome, and I have the inner confidence and fortitude to be able to navigate changes that would come to me. I knew that would take special people around me and I knew that I had to attract these people. I had to put out the type of people that I wanted to surround myself with that shared my core values uh, because I knew that the people around me were the most important element to continue to elevate each other yeah. and enhance our experiences together. So I didn't have every piece of the equation completed because if you do that, you can tend to freeze in indecision or you know, freeze at looking at the process. But my passion and my drive and my internal fortitude knew that there was no other way than just incredible success for me. And I knew that there wasn't anything that I couldn't do if I wasn't willing to do it. Wow, that's incredible. So there's one thing I've been absolutely dying to ask you because you got into this business at a really young age, like you were in your really early young early 20s. Yeah, and that's how that story kind of formulated is really why I'm so passionate and why my inner confidence just smashes any fear or anything that I, I'm never concerned about my growth in this business or as a person because uh, of my passion for it. I mean, I have such a great relationship with my parents. They're the most incredible, sweet people in the world. And mm -hmm. I hope I can be half of the parent mm -hmm. that they were to me um, because they were just so authentic and so honest with me. And they let me live life. They let me feel hurt. They let me see how difficult and the, what the struggle of life could be, how expenses continue to grow and income doesn't rise at the same rate. And they encouraged me to always, you you know, seek out people that had what you would hope to obtain and really listen to the lesson and they encouraged me to do that and they encouraged me to to learn and to talk and really having that ability gives you the clarity and the confidence to be able to understand what life is really all about. So part of our story is in when my families, both of them are Italian and when they came to Canada, they all lived in a house together until they could save up enough money to move out and buy their own houses. Mm -hmm. So already I knew that to get to where you wanted to go, you had to put smart strategies in place and work together as a team to get there. Gotcha. And so for me, I was always really fascinated by the real estate story, you know, at a very young age, because home ownership was always a core fabric of our being and our immigrant story. Mm -hmm. And then when we, when I was very young, you know, my parents would share, oh, this is what we're doing. We're going to buy a house and this is the mortgage that we're going to get. And I noticed at that young age, there was always a lot of anxiety that came around with the whole mortgage process because my father was a baker and had a high school education, right? And so there was quite a bit of nervousness around it. And, you know, they always kind of felt like oh you know maybe I I don't know what I deserve in terms of finances and nobody's really gonna pay attention to me because nobody really pays attention to you in finances until you have millions of dollars and at that young age that really fired something up inside me Kyra and it made me think that is not fair mm -hmm. and I am gonna change this I don't know how mm -hmm. but I'm gonna change this because my father is the hardest working person that I know and I know what my family has done to come here and be able to have what they have mm -hmm. I'm gonna change this this is not right okay and so you know uh, as the years came by I didn't know what that was gonna be and I was always very entrepreneurial got recruited right out of high school for a marketing job and that led me into leading a business club at the young age of 19 and I met a mortgage broker and that mortgage broker shared with me what they did and literally from that instant I was like that's my path when I was in high school 
I ran a call center. So I went to school from nine to three, and in grade nine onward, I worked from four to nine. Oh. I was banking big bucks and saving it because I knew I had to start early. And not only that, but I was on the phone. So the person that was on the other end, they didn't know if I was 50, 40, 20. Ah. At the time, I was 14. <laughs> And so I wow. built my confidence. I understood a process. I, you know, continued to grow my emotional intelligence. And I was afraid of nothing. I was managing people older than me. And if they had a problem with it, they were out the door. Wow. You know, I had no problem with it. And my results spoke for themselves. And I wasn't a talker. I was like, I'll demonstrate to you what I can do. And the numbers speak for themselves. So I had that confidence being that force at a really young age. Yeah. And so I wasn't afraid of coming across a certain way. And I knew that, you know... Sometimes people think that experience or age means something, and I knew that passion and curiosity and commitment could also mean more. It could make up for Good some for of the you. things that you didn't have. How have you handled failures in your life, or how have you recovered from a setback? That's hard to say, Kyra, because I haven't really had a lot of failures. You know, I, and here's the thing. I think I have had failures, but I think I haven't been able, been able to identify them as such because of my attitude. I feel that if something hasn't gone the way that I want or the way that I've thought would be mutually beneficial for everyone on a moving forward basis, there's a lesson in it and there's mm. something deeper that maybe I don't have the answer to today but it's going to present itself down the road will it, where I will ha have been enriched from the experience yeah. to be able to bring that forward yeah. to make whatever going forward. So, Very cool. I mean, from a, from a high level perspective, I haven't had failures. <laughs> from a micro perspective, absolutely. Yeah, if you consider, sure. you know, for you sure. lose a deal here or there or, you yeah. know, but yeah. I have to say I'm methodical in my approach, you know, I'm relatively cautious and it comes from a place of passion, so. And you're actually describing the A in sparkle and the A is adversity and taking the adversity and using it as a platform to advance upon even bigger opportunities. I mean, I think that you always have to be led by your core values. And my thing is, I haven't cared about, you know, I measure my success based on how I can help others and the impact. Mm -hmm. And if that means that in our journey together, I can't help you right now, that's yeah. not going to stop me from developing that relationship and us working together in the future. If anything, that just is continuing to build on our foundation of trust together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at the core values, you know, when you have people who have the core, same core values around you and are looking to execute that, not only in, in business, but in life, and with everything that they do, everything comes to you. People are attracted to that. Mm -hmm. In a world where you don't know who to turn to or where to trust or who's got whose best interest in mind, to know that that's the very foundation of who we are and what we do and what we're led by, mm -hmm. I have to say that because of that, I feel that you, there, there is no fear. There's nothing to overcome. There's nothing you can't conquer when you're always doing the right thing all the time. Mm -hmm. you're only going to continue to be more successful and have more opportunities. It's right. just yeah, like yeah. one plus one is two, you know? <laughs> it's that easy. Yeah, it's that easy, but it takes hard work. Of course. It takes yeah. discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always minutia of details that are mundane and can feel boring, but that's when, you know, you have to continue to look at the bigger picture and you have to continue to find people around you that will fill in that because that, that minutia is what they thrive on. Mm -hmm. So looking to bring out the best in people yeah. around you is a huge part of that. Absolutely. What's your biggest piece of advice for a female entrepreneur? I would say don't set a limit for yourself and understand your value and don't let anybody else take credit for it. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people let other people take credit for things that they've done or ideas that they've created mm -hmm. that could have a big impact. And I would say, no, you take credit for it. You put the initiative forward. You're the one who's not afraid to demonstrate it. If you did it, you take credit for it. So how do you balance between being a big career woman and having a family and being a mother. Yeah, you know, I wondered the same thing, but you know, my business and who I am and the life I lead is me. 
And I think the best thing that my parents did for me was just being authentic about their life. They didn't shelter it. And, you know, when my parents had to work late or my dad had to work late in the bakery, you know, me and my mom would go in there and cut buns if we had to, mm -hmm. to help him get out at time. And so that collective and team effort mm -hmm. is something, you know, of what it was. When I had my baby, I was back to work in like a week, mm -hmm. being a first time mom. And everybody around me had that same teamwork mentality. And I had great people around me. And I had been in business already for almost 10 years by yes, the time I had yes. had a baby. So, you know, there's, when I say there's lots of elements that surround this, mm -hmm. you know, it's not one thing that assisted with that, it's the cumulative cumulative effect mm -hmm. of the compound effect of yeah. everything coming together and again saying okay you know we're gonna have children now we have to seek out an amazing nanny we have to you know the radio station put a studio in my house when I had a baby so I didn't have to go back and forth that took time off and you know because having you know having the ability to be in media as well as mortgages for the yeah. last decade has been a, a privilege and yeah, so exciting for me right and so you know also it's teamwork my husband is an amazing supporter he's always someone who has worked together with me to help build me up and help me you know just be the best that I can be and and he was willing to do whatever it took too. you know when you have a new baby and you're trying to nurse and you're trying to work <laughs> I mean I have a great team around me and my husband would come in with the baby and I'd be breastfeeding on the phone with the reporter and <laughs> underwriting a deal at the same time and I'll never forget Chris Kayette walked by and he said well that's that's multitasking and I have to say that my business has never been better my business has continued to grow to an even higher level having children mm -hmm. and now that I have also had children I have to say that there's uh, a different level of understanding for me I cannot look at a male in the same light who's had the same success because they haven't had to do what we've had to do being pregnant delivering the baby nursing it getting up in the middle of the night and continuing to grow your business we might as well just wear Superman capes all day long because I'm sorry <laughs> but how many people you know, how many people, have, now it's not possible for another gender to do, it's just not possible for the other gender to do it. So <laughs> that's why for me now, I'm like, I already had confidence. But now being able to do all that, yeah. it's just like... It takes it to the next level. It does take it to the next level and just another level of, hey, yeah, we got this. That question was coming up a lot. Like, how do you juggle work-life balance? Like, because when you're so driven with your career, right. it can be easy to get consumed in that right and then it's like oh my god it's time to pick up the kids or what are we doing this weekend what fun thing did I plan or didn't plan like I mean I've struggled with that myself so right. how do you find the work-life balance to well I think I have to I I understand there really is no such thing as balance it's like your life yeah and for me I love my kids and I want to be present with my kids so I've always been really disciplined. Like, you know, in order to get the certain results, they have to compound on each other. And then it snowballs to the ability where you're just, you know, accumulating the snow and you're continuing <laughs> to modify the snowball down the hill. But for me, it's when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I look to surround myself with people that understand that. I just don't have time for people who don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the the care or the yeah, will, the yeah, desire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm looking, you know, that's why I think he, I've always been really attracted to you is uh -huh. throughout my life and my career, you understand all of these things. And we've always worked together in our friendship and in our work relationship and, you know, together as mothers mm -hmm. to just be the best people that we can be. So when you surround yourself with other people that are like that, yeah, you know, it just makes life that much more abundant moving forward. So I understand there's no such thing as balance. Like sometimes I will like absolutely cry I, you know, like the other Friday night, I was over at my girlfriend's house. Every Friday, we do the pizza with our two kids. And I just started crying because I'm like, oh my God, I haven't been able to go to these classes with my daughter because I've been busy. And what is balance? And I'm missing this. And we have our highs and we have our lows, but we just have to remind ourselves that we're doing the best that we can. And so, yeah. you know, the next week, that was it. I went to her class the next time. <laughs> so every day, we can make a different choice. Yeah. We can. We can change the way we want to do something, and yeah. that's really the beauty and spice of life. And again, when you're surrounded by amazing people, you just use that same discipline that you execute in your business to say, nope, I'm doing something with my kids. Nothing else matters. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of social glass ceilings, what do you think is the best way for women to get to where they want to be in the world so that they're treated with fairness, equality, and respect? 
I think it's about identifying people who have like-minded goals as you and also just encouraging the behavior of your children at that age. You know, it's raising your son to understand that, you know, there's not something that's a man's job or a woman's job. It's a collaborative thing. And one of the biggest things I'm proud of, I mean, he's five years old, but I'm always proud that when he looks at a, a problem and he just looks to be a part of the solution. He doesn't chirp in about all these ideas. He'll just look to bring the solution forward to make everyone happy. And he doesn't know, you know, I think we have a great opportunity because he doesn't know in our household who is to do what. He doesn't say mommy does laundry or daddy <laughs> goes to work. It's very, okay, mommy and daddy are both doing this and we're all doing this and we're all working together. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to my daughter, um, I think that, you know, if you look back 50 years ago, it was all about the husband going to work and the woman supporting the husband and the endeavor to do that. It made me sick. I saw on Facebook the other day, it was like a Betty Crocker excerpt and it was like, you know, how to be the perfect wife, you know, don't talk to your husband, you know, 10 minutes, clean the kids, have a drink ready for him, don't trouble him with your woes. And I just thought, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not at all like that. But, you know, for me, it, I see this movement now finally coming out in, in commercialism. You know, like my daughter, she loves Moana. Moana was the first movie that she really watched for the first time. Well, she's two and a half. So it was like the first movie that she saw in its entirety. And as a, as a mom, I cried through that entire movie because I was just so proud of this movie not being about a woman giving up her voice so she can have an opportunity of love with this man and giving up her family, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. someone who was like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to take the place of my father and live in this horrible place so you can love me and do all these things for me. It was about a woman who had to dig deep. She knew that, you know, she had a huge journey ahead of her. She followed her intuition. She used her strength when she needed to and bam. She wasn't all about doing this for Maui. She got Maui to do what she needed him to do for the greater good. <laughs> and that's what we all have to do, yeah. you know, male or female. And it shouldn't be about love or it shouldn't be about trying to elevate somebody else or what you have to give up to be able to do these things. It's about collectively doing things ultimately for the greater good. And if you're not led by that, it's going to be hard to live your day to day. Yeah. So I have to know this. What is your spirit animal? It's got to be a tiger. <laughs> no, actually, it's not a tiger. It's a honey badger. A honey badger is powerful, passionate, and resilient. Those born under the zodiac are fierce competitors who are not afraid to go after what they want. This incredibly complex sign is extremely powerful and capable and also highly emotional. When focused, they can harness great power and wisdom to accomplish what few others are capable of. And when out of balance, they can become terrible tyrants, equally capable of using their power for destruction and manipulation if left unchecked. Knowing what you know today, what's the most important advice you would give to your 20-year-old self? I would say that your mind is priceless real estate. So be very cautious of what you allow in there mm. and what you allow to continue to consume your thoughts. Wow. And so what do you do to consume yourself with positive thoughts? Because I know you're somebody who expresses a lot of gratitude. Like I always hear oh, you say things like, I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for that, which I love about you. And that is the E in sparkle as well. Express gratitude daily as you go about life. So I know you focus on very positive things That's and surround right. yourself with positive people. Is that kind of your mantra? Like you don't let junk food into your mind? Yeah, I don't let junk, junk food or junk people. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to go through the experience and feel it. So of course, things come into your mind or you get upset about things. But for me, I kind of have like a checklist in my mind of how long I'm going to let it be there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think, you know, recently me and my entire family were in a car accident and we were hit by a drunk driver. And my first uh, reaction was like super anger. I wanted to kill this guy. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just realized that that anger wasn't going to change the result of the accident and it wasn't going to change our, our family's life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I quickly after the car accident felt just immense gratitude because 
it was like the best possible scenario, mm -hmm. you know, for the circumstance. And I think that getting rid of emotions that aren't beneficial and helping you move forward, I'm very attracted to people that want to think and develop and create things. And I think like gossip is kind of like the lowest form of, we all do it, but you know, spending time talking about negative things, spending time upset about things is not, um, beneficial in helping you move forward or elevate yourself, elevate your thinking. And I think when you elevate your thinking and you elevate your mind, you know, you're really bringing, you have your opportunity to change the world. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. What is one characteristic that you believe every leader should possess? It has to be passion. You know, if you're leading with your core values, then you know that you're working for something that is bigger than you so you can have an impact uh, on the greater good. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is good for your community, it's good for the people around you, and you're being led by the right moral compass. And when you are able to incorporate all of those into the core fabric of who you are and your work, is not work because you're living your passion it is so easy to get up be fired up and always be led by the right thing and people are attracted to that hugely they yes. want to work with people who really care about what they're doing we know these are the problems we've foreseen them and we're going to protect you from that mm -hmm. and that's the difference because so many people are just so operational you know we're all just trying to get through the day Whereas, no, like, the day is mine, you know, <laughs> this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to get there. And, you know, and when you're able to inspire people to do it collaboratively and empower them and give them your trust by empowering them with the right skills and the right leadership, mm -hmm. then you all know that you're working together for something that is much bigger than you and the rewards will continue to come and then it's up to you managing them. Yeah, and passion is huge because it just energizes people. Like I think everybody is attracted to energy uh, and wants more energy, right? Like I think people have a need for that. When you meet people who are super passionate, I think everybody's just drawn to that because there's something very magnetic about it, right? And not everybody has that either. Yeah. So I would agree. Yeah, because I mean, mortgages itself can be quite boring. Who mm -hmm. wants to talk about numbers? But when you get to talk about the excitement of what this is going to do for your life and how you can now build off this new change and how we avoided a costly mistake and we put your life on a totally different path that you didn't even know you had and now it's working for you instead of you working for it. Yeah. It's a, it's just, you've just turned your, your world around and it's always the difference between what you know. And so being able to empower people with that also feels really powerful, really great. And it, it leads me to live an abundant life because I know that the work that I'm doing is living beyond me and is creating a better world and a better society and a better community and more educated people and empowered people yeah. that don't have to feel victim sure. to You're passionate what about life people. gives you. You're passionate about the people, right? Yeah. And about improving people's lives. Like that's where your passion is, right? Yeah. And you probably would have wanted that for your own parents. Like it would have been great if there was somebody back then. That's what have, they always say. Right? They're like, oh yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We need you back, but we were trying to get it more and I was working in the bakery. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. that's exactly what they say. But you know, it's just, and the fact that they were so real with me and they shared those things and they weren't like, oh, nothing's going on, honey. Go yeah. play with your Barbies. You saw the struggle. They were like, oh, honey, like, oh, you know, yeah, those yeah, are big yeah. things to talk to little kids about. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, and uh, so I just try to remember everything that my parents did with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do. Yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, yeah, hopefully I'll... <laughs> it's a journey. It's a work in progress, right? Always, always, yeah. always. No, yeah. that's great. Thank you so much, Angela. That was Such a wonderful. Pleasure.